Uh, hey, Gracie, are you okay? I'm fine. I just need to clear the mucus from my nose. <sighs> now I can breathe. Okay, good. So today, let's talk about mucus. What? That's disgusting! Well, okay. Since mucus is created in our human body via specialized cells, let's talk about those instead. Specialized cells in human bodies? Do these cells have the same basic structure as what we have learned previously? What we learned previously is the generalized cell structure for animals and plants. What we will learn today are some specialized cells. But do they have the exact same structure? As in, do they have a cell membrane, cytoplasm, and a nucleus? No, a specialized cell may have additional organelles compared to the generalized cell structure. Or they might also lack some organelles compared to the generalized cell structure. That's right. Do note that multicellular organisms are composed of multiple cells, and each cell is usually modified to carry out specialized functions. Thus, the appearance of the cell will also vary depending on what the main function is. I remember, multicellular organisms are organisms that are composed of many cells. That's right. And so, the cell's form and shape are varied. Okay, so there will be a relationship between the structure and the particular function of the cell, right? Yes. For instance, the role of the ciliated cell is to move mucus towards the throat. So, the cilia cells move mucus. Tell me more about this cell, teacher. Sure. Ciliated cells are cells that bear cilia. Cilia are specialized structures in the form of fringe of minute projections. In our body, they can be found in several places. Cilia is the plural term. The singular term is cilium. I know. Ciliated cells can be found in the walls lining our windpipe. They are also found in the bronchi of our lungs. Well done! How did you know that? I had asthma as a kid, and I remember the doctors talking about it. Ah, uh, okay. I'm wondering, how do the cilia cells move mucus? Well, the cilia perform an upward beating motion that carries the mucus upwards. I'm assuming that the mucus is made and released by cells near the ciliated cells? That's right. I imagine that the cilia can trap dust and bacteria. No. It is actually mucus that traps dust and bacteria. The ciliated cells in the windpipe move the mucus up to the throat, where it is swallowed and disposed of. Oh dear. So, although we see mucus as something slimy, sticky, and disgusting, Mucus and cilia are important in keeping us healthy. That's right. So mucus is more like a conveyor belt, and cilia is the machine under the conveyor belt. Meanwhile, the dust and the bacteria are the sweet cases and boxes on top of the conveyor belt, right? Very good analogy. But why do we sometimes need to blow our nose to get rid of the mucus? Ain't it supposed to simply go to our throat? Well, sometimes we get the flu and get really sick. So, your cells will adjust to that by producing more mucus to help expel the virus or bacteria. Thus, a buildup of mucus in the throat or in the nose may happen. Now, imagine that there are a lot of suitcases and boxes that need to be expelled. And that's when we blow our nose. Ah, I understand now. Our body is so amazing. Tell me more about the other specialized cells in our body, teacher. Sure. Besides ciliated cells, we have nerve cells, red blood cells, sperm cells, and egg cells. <laughs>